It's hard to imagine medicine today without the huge impact that MRI scanning has made. Over the last 30 years, magnetic resonance imaging has made a massive contribution to our understanding of the human body. It's enabled us to diagnose disease, to speed up the development of new treatments, and even to unlock some of the mysteries of the human brain. Medical imaging first took off in 1895 after the discovery of x-rays. However, there are limitations with the images produced. They're brilliant at showing bone, but not so good for the less dense parts of the body. What doctors really needed was a way of looking in detail at the soft tissues of the human body, and the answer came in the late 1970s, when British physicist Sir Peter Mansfield and American chemist Paul Lauterbur hit upon the idea of adapting an existing method of looking at chemical structures known as nuclear magnetic resonance. The two scientists relied on the fact that a hydrogen atom will behave like a tiny magnet. If it's placed in a strong enough magnetic field, it will align just like a compass needle. Then if a burst of energy is applied in the form of a well-tuned radio wave, it knocks the atom off alignment. Then when the atom bounces back, it emits a signal. These signals can be converted into images using a computer. And because water contains hydrogen atoms and makes up almost two thirds of the human body, it became possible to generate a detailed 3D map of all its tissues. So MRI is a way of virtually and painlessly cutting open the human body to peer inside. With Medical Research Council funding, the next 30 years saw MRI scanning become an essential part of medical care. There are now over 60 million MRI investigations carried out worldwide every year. And in 2003, Sir Peter Mansfield and Paul Lauterbur were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their outstanding achievements. MRI was actually a chance discovery. Sir Peter was trying to develop an alternative to x-rays for studying crystal structures. That didn't work for practical reasons, but in the process he discovered how to image humans. We looked at plants and uh, various sort of uh, botanical specimens, twigs of trees and so on, but uh, I had the idea in 1975 to put a finger, a, a living finger, in the coil. I tried putting my fingers in and they were just a little bit too large for the coil size. But one person, uh, Andrew Maudsley, he was a uh, second year research student at the time, he could get most of his fingers separately into the coil. And so we obtained uh, a set of images of his fingers and they, as it happened, turned out to be the very first uh, NMR images of human living tissue. MRC were very quick to pick up on the importance of this fundamental discovery. And indeed, they uh, invited uh, Sir Peter and, and colleagues to apply for MRC funding. This funding underpinned not only the development of the technique, but also its clinical applications in tumour diagnosis, um, diagnosis of MS, stroke and a host of other applications. Mark, we've got our volunteer in the scanner. What's the first stage? OK, so we're going to take our scout images, which you can see here. So what's a scout? Just a preliminary scan? Yeah, just a guide to show you roughly where you're going to plan your images. We've got a sagittal slice here, which is straight down through the middle of the nose. We've got a coronal one here, slicing the head like this, and an axial one, or transverse one, which is going straight through the head like that. And this is a very special kind of MRI scanner, isn't it? It does allow you to actually look at the function of the brain as it's happening. Yeah, absolutely. We can get the person in there to do a task. We can get them to press a button or move their fingers. Um, normally in blocks of say 30 seconds. They do a task for 30 seconds, then they rest for 30 seconds, and then work out any brain function. If we can look at some images here. So you can see we're taking a whole volume of the brain every two seconds in this instance. And by doing this, you can see the changes in the oxygen in the blood, which is affected by the firing of the neuron, and you can actually pick up that brain activity. You can see people thinking. 
Even though the pioneering work in this field began over 30 years ago, the limits of MRI technology are still being pushed and there are many exciting advances just on the horizon. Fundamentally new things are being able to be seen. We're able to watch neurons fire through neural current imaging. And the whole notion of what an MRI scan is going to be in the future will change. We may not need to put coils on top of people's bodies. We may just slide into a tube with traveling wave MRI, or even swallow some nanomagnets and report on what's happening in the cells in our body that way. We're using a technique called diffusion MRI, which allows us to trace the pathways of the human brain. This lets us build up a picture of the brain's wiring diagram, or the so-called human connectome. Um, that's important because it means if we have a patient who's got a very particular area of brain damage, we can see if that's knocked out a link between two specific areas of the brain. So functional MRI is really useful, but what happens if you want to look at functional networks in the brain in a two-week-old baby or someone with such advanced Alzheimer's that they can't do the cognitive tasks that you'd normally do? Um, it turns out that you can still see all of the same functional networks even when the person is at rest, just because they spontaneously talk to each other all the time. And so that's what we're increasingly doing with resting functional MRI. One of the really interesting parts of all this is whether it can be applied to uh, people with uh, psychological or psychiatric problems. Um, that, I think, is where the future of brain scanning lies. And I'm pleased to say that we in this department are making uh, very considerable progress towards that. The tremendous potential of MRI means that the story is really only just beginning. And the Medical Research Council is committed to funding pioneers like Sir Peter Mansfield, who can apply this type of cutting edge technology to combating disease and improving human health.